the majority of people in the middle of the whole one will be the stamp. Yeah. So, you know, you've got some good people around you. Dennis, Kevin, uh, I forget their names, but I know them. <laughs> you've got some people around I forget all of their names, but I've met them and they're good for you. And you're doing a good job. I mean, you've seen the channel, your channel's going from strength to strength. And, the, you know, the, the way in which you interview people and, and do what you do is continually improving. Well, there's some big things lined up, mate, in the next few months. Massive. That's going to be totally different to what everybody else is doing because there's too many people. Well, what we did the other day, right? We had a day watching what people put out. Certain, I'm not going to mention people's names, but certain channels put some out within minutes. Another channel puts the same thing out, but puts their spin on it. But they're yeah. talking the same monotone. And then another channel does the same things, and it's like an order of the day. And it's like six or seven of them, they're just sat at home waiting to see what everybody else does. Nobody dare do their own stuff. And I've noticed people are putting stuff out off at back of what I do. So I thought to myself, well, I'm going to try and go a different route to everybody else because it ain't about the money to me now because I'm really comfortable. It's about achieving. It's about achieving. And yeah, you get the money we're winning. But it's about achieving. I don't want to be one of them sheep. I don't want to be a sheep. I don't want to be one of them. You want to be an influencer and a leader, both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not, none of the channels can get me on there, can they? They can't find me up and get me on their channel. <laughs> can't what? They can't hold me up while working and get me on their channel, can they? Fucking lane, he's in him here. Get him here with foreign plates, man, all of it motorway. Unbelievable. Go on, mate, so how do you cope with them down your way, Stig, in London? Well, I don't really, I don't get upset at all by the motorway, today. And all the crazy people they do, it doesn't affect me whatsoever. It can't, because um, I've been forever tense and upset if I don't let it happen. I mean, after I've been doing a job and a person say to me, I see that, and I, I haven't gone and seen it. I mean, it hasn't affected me. I just, I just get on with avoiding things with getting from A to B as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. Only if they then debate with me will I ever, does it affect me? And thankfully, that doesn't matter. Cabby though, aren't you? You're used to it, aren't you? Well, I've done this now much for 30 years. 30 years! So, I mean, I've had plenty of road rage rounds and everything else and got involved when other people have not even hit me. They hit someone else and uh, it's upset me. I've done all of that, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, how does it help me and my family? It doesn't, does it? Yeah, well, anyway, enough of the adventures of uh, Sid James in your car, in your taxi. Uh, back to boxing. Who do you think is going to put the next show on in England? Is Eddie Hearn's July 25th show going to happen? Yes or no? And is Joshua's in is Anthony Joshua's injury genuine? Start with who's going to put the next show on? I would say it's possibly going to be Eddie, yes, and, but I think Frank's got some things going on too, he's doing it, he's, he's got, he's playing some bits and pieces, isn't he? Yeah, so, what? I don't know, I can't say, but I would say probably Eddie would be, I would say, I would say probably Eddie, probably, yes. Yeah. yeah. Probably Eddie, yeah. So, um, yeah. Innovative Eddie. 
innovative Eddie. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> innovative. Carl Froch, uh, before Eddie got in with Carl Froch, he'd already beaten um, two, three, four. He'd already beaten seven world champions in, 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 before he even got with Eddie. He'd had a right run of fights before he got to Eddie. Mickennessy's boxing, isn't it? Mickennessy's not the type of guy that's going to say, Hey up Carl, it's Mick. Do you fancy oh, Hello Magazine uh, coming around to your house tonight with them? He's not that type of guy. He's the type of guy, a blue collar guy, Mickennessy. He goes and finds the next big things in amateur who, who never got to Olympics and he turns pro, the, turns them over, doesn't he, as pros? That's, what, that's yeah. where his expertise is, Mickennessy's. Listen, mate, listen. Right, you got to look at it like this, right? Eddie Hearn's got the EIS on him, giving him a conveyor belt of fighters. Do we agree on that? Yeah, of course we do, yeah. Right, do we agree that Sky give him the platform? Of course. Right, so Sky give him the platform, and uh, he's got all them commercial people around him. He's got all his mates from TOWIE. We about 50 million subscribers on the, their social media. He gives all them uh, VIP passes to every show. So they put it on their Twitter, don't they, about it? That it's the in place to be, it's an event. Right, so he's got all that. He's got YouTubers in his pocket. Right, in his pocket. You know. You haven't got me, mate. I'm not in nobody's pocket. No, I know. You want to come and sit in on some of the meetings that me and Dennis are. And, and, and when, and when I have meetings with Kevin, I'm in nobody's pocket, mate. I, they get told straight. Me right. and Dennis are at it every two weeks. We have a fallout every two weeks. <laughs> Listen, mate, what am I going to do? Be sat round, Denny. Help, Dennis. Help, Michelle. Help, Bob. You host. Am I going to be one of them? A rimmer? Am I heck? You've got to tell it straight. Yeah, but they appreciate you for that. Well, What's the door? Dennis won't be able to do boxing without me, would he? <laughs> I'm going to start putting invoices in for my time, though, I think, Dennis. I know you're watching. Yeah. There's some big invoices yeah. coming to be coming your way soon, Dennis. Yeah, I'll be able to do because there's no more ticket deals, Dennis. We ought to outlaw Southpaw and we ought to outlaw ticket deals. You're going to outlaw Southpaw? No. I'm only joking. Southpaws ought to be outlawed. They meet everything with a face, don't they? And when, 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 it, when they don't, they're, they're just peppering you with jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Louis Ortiz couldn't get a fight because he was a southpaw. A big punching southpaw. Andre Ward didn't want to go near Lucian Boutet, did he? After Super 6. 
They left it to the yeah. Cobra to serve him up. Yeah. Have I been watching a lot of old fights? Yeah. I'll tell you what I did watch the other night. I watched Meldrick Taylor against Julio Cesar Chavez. And, it, and I wanted to slit. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to say that. On channel, no. I wanted to strangle Richard Steele. Uh, no, squeeze his. I just wanted to squeeze his cheeks because everybody knows he was in Don King's pocket years, wasn't he? Yeah. Why would you stop a fight with two seconds to go and the man stood up and you know there's two seconds to go and the other man's at the other side at ring? A great fight like that. Could you imagine Frank Cappuccino stopping Ward Gatti one? Could you imagine that when Gatti were on ropes and getting bashed about and turned away? Could you imagine the Frank Cappuccino stopping it? Hey, we would have been robbed of the Ward Gatti two, Ward Gatti three, wouldn't we? And they would have been screaming bad stoppage because Gatti's got powers of recovery. So Richard Steele, I put him in the same bracket as the guy who stopped Johnny Nelson against Carl Thompson. Because that's the only one, only other terrible one I've seen. People go on about Frotch Groves being bad. George Groves, George Groves had a concussion. He was kept in Manchester Hospital all night. It will be in Howard Foster's book. So all you gimp from Gimpville Island running around with your ginger hair transplants you need to remember Carl Froch finishes like a steam train so what would have happened can I'm doing under mile an hour here what would have happened if uh, I'm in slow down what would have happened if uh, Groves would have had to finish rest around nine 10, 11, 12, so 3, 6, 9, what would have happened for the next 10, 11 minutes? If he already had a concussion, could we have had a death on our hands? Maybe. Maybe. Inexperienced Cosgroves, isn't it? He was a better fighter on the night, but he'd never been any envy anybody who was seasoned. The word is seasoned. Never been in with anybody seasoned like that. And he thought he'd got him out there in round six. When he didn't have, you could see the Cobra licking his lips in round seven. It was only a matter of time before he lowered the boom. Yeah. The rest of it, just Eddie Hearn and Sky wanted to sell the rematch. They didn't want it out there about the concussion, did they? So I'm gonna speak out about it. And everybody knows who were at Sky and Matchroom. They all know what happened, but they don't want to come out and say, oh, well, Howard Foster won't be allowed to say anything until he finishes. And he retires soon. When he retires and it comes out in his book, you will see it. He's a fair bloke, Howard Foster. And George Groves, deep, deep down, really knows that he was in a big pan of soup. He was in a bigger pan of soup than what Joshua was in at the moment. Yeah. But it is what it isn't. <laughs> you what? He went to where? Court? Yeah. No, he didn't. He went to IBF. He appealed to IBF. He appealed to IBF and he got it, didn't he? But it was all part of pantomime, wasn't it? No, why would he appeal to fight? For the first fight, it was a mandatory. He appealed. When you lose a mandatory fight, you don't get an automatic rematch, do you? Unless it's in contract. Yeah. Now, so they had a rematch because Groves appealed, but Frotch got mega money, didn't he, for that? Mega money, he sat laughing. Yeah. He's over in his Ferrari today. 
<laughs> we're golfing yesterday with Rocco and he's overing out his Ferrari today. Your 350Z? Yeah, my 350Z. I've been watching some programs on YouTube, Stig, about 350Zs. There's this one in America. Sorry, sorry. 240Z. And they, they've done all sorts. They put a, a BMW M3 engine in a 240Z and pimped it like you could never imagine. Look like some art like NASCAR. Because the shape of them 240Zs are classics, aren't they? Well, you're going to say that because you've got one, aren't you, Steve? But do you know what I think about that? What, then what you've got? I don't think they're nowhere near as good as a 240. I don't know why. I think they're rather fast well, in that, but. But your dad had a 340, didn't you? My dad had a 280 when I was 16 year old. I think it was about three. Yeah. When I was 16, that'd be D D regs would be out then, and my dad had an X reg, 82. 1982, 280ZX Targa in metallic blue, silver two-tone. And the first time I seen it, I'd been in Boston and I appealed and I won my appeal. And I came out of court with 50 hours and a fine, and instead of going back for the remaining month of my sentence, wait, well, was detention centre then, but it was Boston rules. Uh, they gave me 50 hours and we walked out of court at Doncaster Crown Court and my dad said get him a new car and I went into getting this green Astra because I think he had a Capri then before then Capri S and he said no this I got in it and he gave it some up ball we rolled I'll never forget and we went to all to, to on the bridge on the Sunday I think me, my dad, my mum and my mate Simon Hill he uh, he comments on comment section, don't you, Simon? Billy Block. <laughs> and we were sat it back with roof off, and I think it was the first time I'd ever been in a, in a car that. We, well, it's like a T top, aren't they? Yeah. And after that, it rolled downhill. <laughs> For me, anyway. Yeah, I did. I nicked it when I was 19 uh, to go on a date. <laughs> and my brother seen me, my brother seen me and he was coming one way in a little Mitsubishi car and I was going the other with suit on. And I seen him and I thought, oh shit. So I had to double back, I double back, I put it in garage and uh, I went and got in my bedroom. Anyway, my brother went to cricket club, got me dad out at pub. He's out in your car dad! My dad went, get me home. He went home, pop garage. My dad went, no, it's in garage, you've seen things. <laughs> oh, Paul, the little grass that he is. Put your hand on exhaust, Dad, it's red out. You could fry an egg on it. I <laughs> could hear him. In bedroom, I thought, oh, I'm going to get it in a minute. But I'll not say what happened after that. But, but yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I told you, that's a true story, that. Yeah, that's a true story. I only nicked it that once, but the Capri that he had, I, I nicked that a few times and put it back, but the, the last time I nicked it, I bumped it, I caught it on a gate post, so I just had to keep going. And I think I, I think I was flying through Nottingham in it. Is it Botham Sill through A1 Blythe? I mean, on them Capris in them days, them Capri S's, it was mega fast. It was four speed, so you go from fourth to third. So I was thinking, right, break fourth, third, and I went fourth, went to put it in third, and it went into first. And I had no belt on, and I went bang, straight into windscreen, cracked me head on windscreen, and and, and, and it, no, it did something to rotary arm, and it won't start, so I just left it side of the road and did a runner. True story, that. But I was wild, oh, Nick Petrol as well in it as well. So there was a man on out for me. Yeah, but, that's, that's the adventures of Tintin, it's just, that's no, is it, that's what I've done. 
But yeah, I'm a very naughty teenager, very looking for thrills. But nowadays, I don't think it's like that, is it? Because I didn't drink then, I didn't smoke, I didn't techo. I just like to get me thrills from main cars, stealing cars, I think. That's how I started. And obviously, you go from that, you go into other things, don't you? Which I'm not going to winter. But it, it, I think it was always in me then at that age. Obviously, yeah. it's not now because I'm fortunate, but then it would it, it was in me to. If it weren't nailed down and I could get it away, I'd take it and just rally it every... I mean, that's what it were then, wasn't it? Ram raids and all sorts. But... Yeah, well, I've, I've never done anything like that. You've never done anything <laughs> like that? No. My old man were pretty strict. My old man was very, very strict. He couldn't have done me, yeah, well, he... but he was strict. And he, his answer to everything was right. Cut, tell, cut plug off his telly in his bedroom, ground him, blah uh, de blah, that kind of thing. You know, I'd rather prefer a good hiding, wouldn't you, as a kid? Rather than all that, you know, all that grounding. Hey? Probably got both. Hey? <laughs> Probably got what? Probably got both. Hmm. Well, we grow up, don't we? Obviously, I'm 50 in October, so. We grow up, don't we? It just takes years to grow up. We, yeah, we have to grow up. We have to grow up, don't we? I'm 50 this year in October, October 19th. Who was he flashing? Weapon. So you're off to Leeds now, I'm off to Leeds, yeah, I've got something big on. Yeah. So you you to Lewis Wigton, Tommy, Lewis Sterling, I can't remember, and then Coach. Excellent, I enjoyed this situation. No problem, mate. Thank you. No problem. Before we go, let's finish off on do you think Kel Brook will fight again? Uh, no, I don't think he will. No. No? No. What do you, who do you think he's going to fight? I don't think he fights again, Kel Brook. It's the stuff that I'm hearing, I think he's done now. Yeah. I think he's done think now, mate. Not. Yeah, the lockdown, he's been... I can't, you know... I don't know, I think the only car thing, that's been passed by day by a long way, and uh, no, I don't think he will. No, I, I think there's a... No, I think there's a lot in there that's going to fall by the wayside. Well, he's been okay out of boxing, really, and he's done well. He's actually is a great boxer. You've only got to look at the, 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 him beating, um, who did he beat? He beat Sean Porter. Yeah. Him beating Sean Porter in the way he did away shows that Cal Brook actually is a very classy boxer who has actually done good things. Career. Yeah, but how many, how, many, how many good wins has he got on his record? Well, that's exactly it. After he's beaten Sean Porter, he didn't really fight. He wasn't in the field for some um, time. Well, he didn't really do anything, did he, until he made the mistake of going up to middleweight with fighting GGG to lock him. So, I mean, and after that, I mean, he really wasn't the same, was he? When he fought El Spence and his other socket win, he immediately retired in that fight to Kadeem and didn't want to fight anymore, which is fair enough. In my view, I wouldn't say that was quickly, he knew what happened. Um, I don't think he's achieved in his career what he probably could have. Were he more collapsed and took bigger fights once he did win the IBF. It's a shame. Sitting around waiting for the cap for the earlier current fight all the time, always going on about that. And Amir at the time was always wanting to fight Manny or Floyd, wasn't he? Yes. And I think, and I think, I think uh, Amir fighting Floyd, that would have been an interesting fight because of Amir's hand speed. Yeah. Mm. But it didn't interesting. Happen. No. Well, I, don't, I don't think Floyd wanted it. Floyd's been very clever. Let's be honest. Yeah. Well, we're going to see, aren't we? But hopefully, Kel Brook gets it, gets another pay-per-view, and Amir Khan, and they put us out in this misery. Yeah, I think so. 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 Yeah,
but it is what it is. Listen, I'm gonna get off stick because it's gonna go this, it's been on two 30 minutes. So, do you want me to get it jazzed up or do you want it to just go out as it is? What, what, you mean where you got cut off? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just leave it rolling, Stig. I'm not. End of day, mistakes okay. happen, don't they? Don't, don't they? You know, if you don't strap your camera into gimbal, or if you don't yeah. uh, get your phone Bluetooth set up and that, they're just genuine mistakes, but the camera still stays on. You know, if it's, it's just that yeah. me, I, I'm, not, I'm that, in that much of a rush all the time, I don't, sometimes I don't think what I'm doing, but uh, which way am I going in it? Yeah, I had a lie in this morning as well, yeah, not for long though, because I've been out with my dog, but... Alright then, well listen, nice to speak to you Stig, hot Stig, and we'll have you on next week, and we'll talk some boxing if there is any to talk about, alright? You take care. It's a pleasure to speak to you. I think I've been good work. Keep being positive and keep doing what you do. Thank you. You're bigger and bigger, little by little, and uh, the jealous people are always going to be there, but you keep on doing what you do. Thank you, you very much, Stig. You take care, all the best. It's a pleasure. Bye. 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 And that was the Stig. And that was his story. Move to the left in three quarters of a mile. That was Stig's story, move to the left. <laughs> so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloy, South York's Transport, Coca-Cola and Lacoste. And Watch Finder. Got a few things up my sleeve. So, alright. So peace out. Don't have nightmares. Shout out to Andy Patterson as well. You need to grow up here to come on channel Andy. Alright, we can afford you as well mate. Please Peace out. Andy and Patterson and, and Rob Kelly. We'll get them on channel here. They're welcome anytime. Both good lads and my peers. Alright.